Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about applications of quadratic functions. So we're just going to jump right into a few examples. First example here, a farmer wishes to enclose a rectangular region, so that's going to be like this grassy area in the picture. He has 120 feet of fencing and plans to use his barn as one side of the enclosure. So we basically need three sides of fencing here, here, and here. So we're going to come up with a quadratic function to describe this um, rectangular region that this farmer is hoping to enclose and help him figure out what the maximum area would be that he can enclose with the amount of fencing that he has. Alright, so let's go ahead and start introducing some variables. So we'll say that we have uh, length x on this side, okay? And we know that the barn is a fixed length and so we, we want to make it a rectangle so whatever length this side is it'll match over here because these are parallel for our rectangle and so the length that we're missing here we don't necessarily know how long this is it doesn't also have to be X um, we just know how much fencing we have so we're going to kind of work backwards from there so considering the fact that we have 120 feet of fencing we can equal that amount total so we know that one side plus the other side of fencing plus the missing side of fencing can equal 120 feet. Okay, so we want to basically solve for this missing part. Um, let's just go ahead and call it M for the missing part, and we're gonna solve this equation for that side. Okay, so we have 2X plus M equals 120, and then we'll solve for M, and so if we subtract 2X from both sides, we get M equals 120 minus 2x. And so that's as far as we can go. And we solve for the missing side. So how we can label this is that the other side of the fencing, whatever amount this is, we know that it's 120 feet minus 2 times x. Okay. So here's why this is going to end up being a quadratic equation. What we're going to end up figuring out is what is the maximum area that this farmer wishes to enclose. And because it's rectangular, we are working with area of a rectangle. So the area of a rectangle is just the length times the width based on this shape. So we're going to say L for length and then W for width. So it's just length times width. And if you notice, let's go ahead and just call this our length. It doesn't really matter which one we call our length. So I'll call this 120 minus 2x. I'll call this side my length. And then we'll call the other side we'll go ahead and call that our width. When we come up with our equation for area, we're going to have our length, so that's the 120 minus 2x, and then we're going to say times the width, and that's the other side, that's x. Okay, and so this becomes a quadratic equation right now, and if you want to, you can actually multiply this out so you can see it even more clearly. This would become 120x, minus 2x squared. So this is in fact a quadratic function. Okay, so this is going to be our area function. We'll say, we'll add a little part in here to make it look more like our function notation. We'll say that this is equal our area in terms of x, and you could also label what x is. So x is feet. Alright, so before we get into finding the maximum area of this region, um, let's just talk a little bit about the domain of this function. So the domain is the values that we can plug into the function, in this case for x, that would give us a, a real number answer that would be useful here. If we're talking about feet, x we don't want to be negative. So we're going to say more than zero. x has to be more than zero because it's representing feet of fencing on the side. So we know we have a total of 120 feet. However, I'm not going to say that it's between 0 and 120 because of this length over here. So we know if we plug in x into this side that we have to not have that be negative or 0 either. So if we just take a look at this real quick, we don't want this to be negative or 0. So we'll just say this side has to be more than 0 for it to exist <laughs> with s fencing. So if we solve this, we'll get 120 is greater than 2x, and if we divide, we get that x has to be less than 60. So the domain of this function would be that x is between 0 and 60. And we can write it like this, or if you want to put it in interval notation, 
we could say that we go from 0 until 60 for input for this function. Okay, so now let's answer the question. What's the largest area of region here that this farmer can enclose with their fencing? And so what we're looking for, if you kind of think about this being a quadratic function, is the vertex. So let's rewrite this function real quick. If we re rewrite it where our quadratic term, our x squared term is in the front, it would be negative 2x squared plus 120x. And so I do that because that's a little bit more clear when it's written like this, that the leading coefficient here is negative. And so if it's negative, that means that if we were to graph this as a parabola, it would be opening downward. So there is a maximum that would occur at the vertex. So we were looking for the vertex of this parabola or this function, and then that would tell us the maximum, in this case it would represent maximum area. Okay, so in order to find the vertex, we're gonna go ahead and use the vertex formula. So for a quadratic function, our vertex formula would be that the x component of the vertex is negative b divided by 2a, and then your y value would be the function evaluated at that input. Uh, and so b and a, what are those? Just as a reminder, so for any quadratic function in general form, we have a x squared, so a is the leading coefficient on the squared term, and then plus b x, so b is the leading coefficient on the linear term, or just x to the first power, and then if we needed it, c would be our constant. So for us, a is negative 2, so we'll plug that in for a, and then b would be the 120, so we'll plug that in also. Okay, so we have that our x component of our vertex would be negative b divided by 2 times a. So b was 120 and a was negative 2. And I always use parentheses just so I don't lose track of any minus signs, especially like this one that shows up here on the bottom. So we end up getting a, ne a negative 4 on bottom and a negative 120 on top. So the negatives divide out and we get 120 divided by 4, and so this would be 30. So, so far we know for our vertex, the x component is 30, and so the output, or the y component, would be our function evaluated at 30, so I'm gonna use a for area. Okay, so our a of 30, plugging 30 into our function right back here, we're gonna say that this is negative two times 30 squared plus 120 times 30 and if you simplify that let's just do a couple steps negative 2 times 900 plus 3600 and so if you work that out you'll end up getting 1800 okay so here's what we got we found the vertex of the parabola that would be the graph of this function if we were to graph this it would be 30 comma 1800 and so remember our input is x in feet and our output is our area and so it's actually square feet and we just found the maximum area so let's just sum this up so we know that the farmer can enclose a maximum area of 1800 square feet if they have a rectangular shaped region and 120 feet of fencing Okay, let's try another example. So for this one, a piece of property is in the shape of a right triangle. The longer leg is approximately 20 meters longer than twice the length of the shorter leg. The length of the hypotenuse is approximately 10 meters longer than the length of the longer leg. Okay, we'll break that down. Find the lengths of the sides of the triangular lot. Okay, so we're looking for the three sides of the lengths of this triangle. And let's introduce a variable. We're gonna say x. And let's reread what we know about this and we'll put it on one of the sides of the triangle. We know the longer leg, how it compares to the shorter leg. Okay, so just kind of notice that the longer leg is in terms of the shorter leg. And then the length of the hypotenuse is in terms of the longer leg. Okay, so the longer leg is in terms of the shorter leg, and then the hypotenuse is in terms of the longer leg. 
So everything kind of goes back to the shorter leg and we don't know anything about the shorter leg so that's what we can actually call x. So we'll just say x is going to be the length of the shorter leg. And so notice we're given lengths in meters so we'll say shorter leg and this is going to be in meters. Alright so visually that means that right here would be x. Okay so we got one side down. We don't know the value yet but we'll figure that out. So now we read the first sentence again. The longer leg is approximately 20 meters longer than, okay, so the longer leg, so we're gonna come up with an equation for that. The longer leg is, so equals, approximately 20 meters longer than. Okay, so 20 meters longer than means that we're adding 20 to something. Okay, so that's this part. 20 meters longer than, we are adding 20 to something. Okay, so got that. And it's 20 meters longer than twice the length of the shorter leg. So twice the length of x. So twice the length of the shorter leg, which we called x. And so we have 20 meters longer than that. So the longer leg is 2x plus 20. All right, two legs down. And now let's come up with the hypotenuse. So we know the length of the hypotenuse is approximately 10 meters longer than, okay? So the hypotenuse, we'll just abbreviate, hypotenuse is 10 meters longer than, so we're adding 10 to something. So 10 meters longer than the length of the longer leg. Okay, so the length of the longer leg is this whole thing here. So 10 meters longer than that. So we can simplify this and say that the hypotenuse is 2x plus 30, okay? So we have all three lengths, but they are just in terms of x. Okay, so we got a good setup here. And so now we just have to figure out what these side lengths are with numbers. So we need to figure out what x is. Okay, so next, what we have to consider is how do the sides of a triangle relate to one another? And that's gonna help us set up an equation that will allow us to actually solve for x. And if you do, are familiar with it, you are probably thinking about the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem says for a right triangle, there is a relationship between the sides of the triangle. If you have A as one leg and B as the other leg and C as a hypotenuse, then the two sides squared and added A squared plus B squared equals the hypotenuse squared, so equals C squared. So we're going to do the same thing with our triangular um, plot of land. So we'll say one leg squared, so 2x plus 20. That could be like our a leg plus the other leg squared, which is just x, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is 2x plus 30. And so notice now we actually do have a quadratic function because we have all of these x squared terms. All right, so we are going to solve this equation for x, and then we can find the actual lengths of the sides of this triangle. So first let's expand. So notice that you have your binomial here, and you're going to end up foiling these out. Okay, so for the first uh, foiling over here, we're going to get 4x squared plus a total of 20 times 2x and another 20 times 2x. So that's going to be 80 x and then 20 times 20 so plus 400 okay then we still have our x squared right here and then over on this side after we foil we're going to get 4x squared and then 30 times 2x and then another 30 times 2x so that's going to be 120x and then 30 times 30 so plus 900 and then we'll start solving so let's get all the terms on one side of this equation and so we'll subtract the 4x from both sides. So if we subtract that, it's gone on both sides. And then we have our x squared. Okay, so x squared. And then if we subtract, let's say 120x from both sides of this equation, then we end up with negative 40x. Okay, so those are gone here and here. And then let's also subtract this 900 from both sides and that would give us negative 500. All right, so let's rewrite this. Okay, so we have our quadratic equation here. It's equal to zero, so you could either use the quadratic formula, and then you could solve for x that way, or you can factor, and this one does factor pretty nicely. So we're just gonna do factoring on this one. So we have x 
and x in both factors. And then numbers that multiply to negative 500 but add to negative 40. So that would be negative 50 and positive 10. And if you want to, you can check. If you FOIL that out, you will get exactly where we just came from with negative 40x minus 500. And so we know that if each factor were to multiply to make 0, then we have x minus 50 would be 0, or x plus 10 would be 0. And so if we solve each of these, we'll get that x is 50, or x is negative 10. Okay, so we got two answers. Now let's go back to the question. We were finding the lengths of the sides of a triangular lot. So getting a negative answer here actually doesn't make any sense since x was in uh, meters. If you remember, we said x was in meters, and it's the length of uh, the sides of this lot. So we're going to just discount this answer right here that's negative, and we're going to work with x being 50. Okay, so now we're almost there. We know that the shortest side is x, which is 50 meters. So that one's done. Then the longer leg is 2 times 50 plus 20. So that's going to be 120. So the longer leg is 120 meters. The hypotenuse is 2 times 50 plus 30. So that's going to be 130 meters. And so we were able to use a quadratic function from using the Pythagorean theorem to come up with the lengths of the sides of this triangle. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. If a person shoots a basketball overhand from a position eight feet above the floor, then the path of the basketball through the hoop can be modeled with this parabola equation, where V is the initial velocity or like speed of the ball in feet per second. And then Y is the height of the ball and X is the distance away from the person. Okay, so you have the person and they're gonna be shooting the basketball and they're shooting it over their head. That's where the ball is at eight feet initially. And the hoop is over here somewhere. And then we have our equation that would describe the path that this ball would travel. It would travel upward and then go downward into the hoop. All right, so first question, if the basketball hoop is 10 feet high and located 15 feet away, then what's the initial velocity the ball should have? Okay, so we know that this is 15 feet away and we know that the hoop is 10 feet high. So we know that this is 10 feet. Okay, so we're gonna plug those into the equation we're given, this parabola equation. And notice the question is, what's the initial velocity? So we're solving for V. So we know the height, Y. So we know Y equals 10. And we know that the distance away, X is feet, it's 15. And so we're solving for V. So what is the initial velocity? So we're gonna plug those values into this equation. All right, so here's our equation of our parabola. And I just filled in that Y was 10 and that X is 15. And notice that we have just V left over, just the velocity is the only variable remaining. So we're gonna be able to solve for that. So I would use a calculator for this, but let's start simplifying a little bit and see what we come up with. All right, so just started simplifying a little bit and let's move over this term in the back here to the other side. All right, so now we're going to solve for V, which is in the denominator. So the very first thing we have to do to start solving for it is get it out of the denominator. And we'll do that by multiplying. So we'll say the left side and the right side of the equation times V squared. That way V is no longer down in this denominator. Notice that it does divide out right here on the right side and then we have it on the left. So let's uh, simplify this. Okay, and so the last step here, we're just gonna divide both sides by negative 15.25, and then we'll get V squared. So we'll do that on both sides. And so we get that V squared is approximately 543.929835. And if you have the full value from your division in your calculator still, then you could just take the square root of this and it would be a little bit more accurate than taking the square root at this step. But we're gonna say square root of this. And technically we will put a plus or minus here, 
but we are talking about our initial velocity of this ball being thrown upward. Um, so we're going to just take the positive of that. But we're going to end up getting that the initial velocity is square root of this, which is approximately 23.3223. And this was the velocity, and this is in feet per second. So initial velocity of the ball being thrown. Okay, so now that we have our initial velocity, then we'll be able to plug that into this equation right where there's a V so that we can then solve for other things such as the height or the distance. So then in the second part, what is the maximum height of the ball? We're looking for Y, but we now know the uh, initial velocity and we'll figure out what this is. Okay, so here's our new parabola equation. All I did was replace V with what we've solved it to be. We said that V is equal to approximately 23.32. So that's now in our equation. Okay, so then the question is saying, what's the maximum height of the ball? So if you think about the path that the ball travels on, it's this parabola shape. And the maximum height would be right here. So if I kind of make that a little bit more clear, you have your parabola like this. So the ball goes up and then down, and then you have this parabola, and that's the height. And if you recall, that height is the vertex. Okay, so depending on the form of your quadratic function, you can look at the vertex a couple of different ways. But the form we have right here with this setup, this looks like a general form where you would have ax squared plus bx plus c. And so if that's the form of your quadratic function, then for your vertex, you can just use the vertex formula, which would be that x is negative b over 2a, and then y is the function value evaluated at that, so f of negative b over 2a. So we'll use this formula to find the vertex that would give us the maximum height that the ball would reach. All right, so this whole quantity right here is a, because it's the coefficient on x squared. So all of this is our value of a, and then this right here is our coefficient on x, so that would be b. And so we'll plug those both into our formula for a and b so that we can find this vertex. So we have our x component of our vertex, and if we plug in b and a into that formula, uh, we get this expression here, and if we simplify that, we're going to get approximately 8.4819, and x was distance in feet, so this is about 8.48 feet, and visually, that would be about 8.5 feet away from them, then is where the max height would occur for the ball, so about 8.5 feet away from them. Okay, so we have that value, but now we need the height because the question is what was the height that the ball reached? So now we need the y component of our vertex, and we're going to get that by evaluating the function at this input, at this x value. So we're going to just go back to our function here, and we're going to plug in about 8.48 feet in for x here and here. Okay, so putting in this x value of about eight and a half feet, and we'll plug that in and simplify to get the height of our vertex. And if you simplify this, this is approximately 12.877 or 12.88. And this is height in feet. So we found out that at, when the ball is about eight and a half feet from the person, then it's at its highest point which is about 12.8 or 8 feet above the ground. And if you think about the picture here, that does sort of make sense. Um, if the hoop is 10 feet high, the ball goes up above that height to come back down to go into the hoop. And so that would be the maximum height. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching.